Thank you. <laughs> um, so the next thing I would like to do is actually have a bit of a panel with our speakers. And I've added a few extra people who I will put up reminders since you haven't seen them yet. <laughs> um, uh, Um, so I would like uh, the speakers to come back up and we'll just have, uh, I'd like to take a couple of questions from the audience um, about the science. It says the panel is what it takes to be a woman in science, but I'm not yes. stuck on that. Um, I'll be more flexible. So um, you have three additional people. You have Eveline, who is a sustainable agriculture specialist. Um, we have Paula, who is uh, into molecular medicine. Um, and Catherine, who is a zoophysiologist, vet scientist. Um, so if you'll ask the questions, I'll repeat them. <laughs> and um, yeah, so please feel free. Does anybody have a question for them, either on their talks or about being a scientist? <laughs> ah, in the back. Yeah, I have a question for Pina. Sorry about the question. Pina. <laughs> Okay. Are there any issues that arise around ownership of ideas in your um, citizen science games? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good question. Um, we haven't come across any, and speaking with... Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, we haven't come across any uh, issues so far. Um, speaking to other people working on similar projects, I actually haven't heard any reports either. What actually tends to happen more often is that some of the people who become very invested um, in the projects, they end up being uh, authors in papers or they even end up working for the project. So I've heard of uh, a few cases of really, really, really invested players getting a job in a citizen science project. <laughs> um, yes. uh, so I think it's kind of mostly been a positive thing that if there is strong ownership, then you know it's kind of handled in a nice way. 